I get letters from all over the world. People worship me. They come to my shows. I'm going to rape the girls. I might rape the guys. I might have sex. I'm, I want it all. I want it all, and I'm going to have it all. Okay, let me ask Because I am everything. All right, yeah. Many words have been used to describe Gigi Allen. Individualist, anti-authoritarian, and unique are among the nicest. Violent, chaotic, and madman are some others. All of those are true, but if you asked Gigi Allen how he would describe himself, he'd say just one thing, the last true rock and roller. And depending on your definition of rock and roll, he just might have been. Born Jesus Christ Allen in 1956, Gigi Allen grew up in Groveton, New Hampshire. His father was a religious fanatic named Merle, and his family lived in a log cabin devoid of electricity and running water. Merle Allen was reclusive and abusive, and often threatened to kill his family. He would like just go crazy and, you know, he'd, he'd go outside and start digging graves and talk about, you know, how he was going to like kill everybody and bury everybody in the grave if my mother didn't do this or do that or whatever, you know. Allen later described living with Merle as a primitive existence, more like a prison sentence than an upbringing. However, he said that he was actually thankful for it, as it made him a warrior soul at an early age. Eventually, Allen's mother Arletta got out and moved to East St. Johnsbury, Vermont, taking Jesus Christ and his brother Merle Jr. with her. Jesus eventually became known as Gigi, since Merle Jr. was unable to pronounce Jesus correctly. Gigi! That's Gigi! My brother Gigi, he said. After Arletta remarried, she officially changed her son's name from Jesus Christ to Kevin Michael in 1966. But in the end, Gigi stuck, and he would go by that nickname for the rest of his life. Whether he was traumatized by his tumultuous early years or simply possessed staunch disregard for the rules, Gigi Allen spent his high school years acting out. He formed several bands, cross-dressed at school, sold drugs, broke into people's homes, and generally lived life on his own terms. But none of that compared to what was coming next. After graduating from high school in Concord, Vermont in 1975, Gigi decided not to pursue further education. Instead, he explored the world of music, inspired by his idols Alice Cooper and the Rolling Stones. Before long, he broke onto the scene as a drummer, performing with several groups and even forming two bands with his brother Merle Jr. In 1977, Gigi found a more permanent gig playing the drums and singing backup for the punk rock band The Jabbers. He soon released his debut album, Always Was, Is, and Always Shall Be, with the band. He ultimately left the group in 1984. Throughout the 80s, Allen again found himself hopping from band to band. He appeared with groups like the Setter Street S, the Scum S, and the Texas Nazis, garnering a reputation as a hardcore underground rocker. After a particularly wild performance with the Setter Street Sluts in Manchester, New Hampshire, Allen gained a new nickname, the Madman of Manchester. But in 1985, Allen decided to take his Madman title to a whole new level. While performing a show with Bloody Mess and the Scabs in Peoria, Illinois, he defecated on stage for the first time in front of hundreds of people. He relieved himself on stage, live. Why, Gigi, did you feel a need to, uh, to defecate in front of a live audience? Well, my body is the rock and roll temple, and my flesh, blood, and body fluids are a communion to the people, whether they like it or not. I mean, I'm not, not out to please anybody. My, my rock and roll is more not to entertain, but to annihilate. I'm trying to bring danger back into rock and roll, and there are no limits and no laws, and I'll break down every barrier put in front of me till the day I die. Unbeknownst to the crowd, the act was entirely premeditated. I was with him when he bought the x lines recalled Bloody Mess, the band's frontman. Unfortunately, he ate it hours before the show, so he constantly had to hold it in or he would have shot before he got on stage. After he shot on stage, complete chaos broke out in the hall. Bloody mess continued. All of the old men in charge of the hall went fucking nuts. Hundreds of confused punk kids were flipping out, running out the door because the smell was incredible. The reaction was evidently the one that Gigi was going for. Michelle, we must warn what you are about to see and hear is quite graphic. I would say that you never really know what's going to happen when Gigi Allen performs. This is Gigi Kevin Allen, arrested when police raided the club. What did he do? He relieved himself and did it all. I mean, you name it, it was probably happening. A police report is quite explicit. It says the singer took his own feces, began throwing it at people, and eating it. 
He was actually off the stage. He was right down here off the stage. Just stepped off and decided to do it. <laughs> Most everybody here probably thought it was funny and was, I don't think, I really don't think people were shocked. He also incorporated blood into his performance by pouring it onto his body and spraying it across the stage and audience. Naturally, the destructive nature of his sets often resulted in venues and equipment companies severing ties with him. Police were sometimes called, especially when Alan began jumping into crowds and onto his fans. Several female concert goers claimed that he sexually assaulted them after the shows, and some were attacked during his sets. He's no stranger to a fight, as he says here himself. See, a lot of people come to my shows expecting a freak show, and they get caught up in the crossfires because they don't realize that what goes on in my mind is very real. And if they're in my way, and if I see somebody there that's just there to see the freak show, then they're, then they're going to be taken out. The only people that are left in my, are my allies who are standing at the end of the show. Those who have been sent to the hospital, those who have been or left or ran out the doors, they're the enemy. The people who stay are the All allies right. of which we take you, on and we will rule. You mentioned this it's no surprise that Allen found himself in and out of jail for various crimes, but perhaps the most serious stint was in 1989. He admitted to cutting and burning a woman and drinking her blood. He ultimately served 15 months in prison for that crime. Allen carried the weight of his childhood throughout his life, constantly bucking authority to make up for the years that he spent under his father's crushing thumb. His close friends also saw his total embodiment of punk rock as an escape from consumerism and commercialism, and as a desire to return rock and roll music to its rebellious roots. Due to poor recording and distribution, Alan's music would never really take off in the mainstream. He would never see the same level of success as other shock rockers. Nevertheless, he continued to perform throughout his life, and he often drew crowds of hundreds or even thousands of punk fans, most of whom were more interested in his antics than his music. Considering his dark personality, it's no surprise that he found solace in the macabre, even when he wasn't on stage. He often wrote to and visited serial killer John Wayne Gacy in prison. And at one point, he even commissioned a painting by Gacy to use for his album cover art. His personal fascination with serial killers added yet another dark layer to his shocking lifestyle. In fact, sometimes he'd hint that if he were not a performer, he might have ended up becoming a serial killer instead. But in the end, Alan was perhaps most destructive to himself. Starting in 1989, he began threatening to kill himself during one of his performances, likely around Halloween. But as it turned out, he was in prison during that time period. It's unclear whether he would have followed through with the threats if he had been free. But once he was released, many people started buying tickets to his shows just to see if he would actually end his own life in front of a crowd. Ultimately, he didn't kill himself on stage. But his last performance on June 27, 1993 was still a one-of-a-kind spectacle. After his show at Gas Station in New York City got cut short, he started a brutal riot just outside the venue before escaping to a friend's home to do heroin. Alan was found dead the next morning of an overdose, still reeking of blood and feces from the night before. He was 36 years old. It's believed that his death was accidental, but some have speculated that it was intentional on his part and a sign that he'd kept his promise to eventually kill himself. It's not so much wanting to die, he once said, but controlling that moment, choosing your own way. And in life, and possibly in death, Gigi Allen chose his own way. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Turn on the notification bell to not miss any other awesome stories from the world of music.